People do not seem to understand Reed Richards. I have heard many descriptions of him online recently due to the excitement of his casting, from both YouTube personalities and internet forums and websites. And more often than not, he is described as nerdy, socially awkward, and neglectful to his wife. Not only are these descriptors woefully inaccurate, they are also quite disparaging to the greatest man in the Marvel Universe. I think the crux of the issue comes from people who simply don't understand the chronology of Marvel Comics. From 1961 until Heroes Reborn, all of the stories took place in the same universe with the same characters. However, Heroes Reborn was a complete company shift, not unlike DC's Crisis on Infinite Earths, that irreversibly changed the Marvel Universe in every way. There are many ways that both comics and fans have distorted this fact explaining pocket universes and universal cataclysms and the like. But the fact remains that a new universe and a new number one issue, or issues, changes everything that comes after it. Now, Heroes Return restored continuity, and the numbering was restored later, but as you will see, this was not a cure-all. His personality had been irrevocably altered, and is therefore clearly not the same man. Nothing Heroes Reborn and After should be taken into account in describing the classic Reed Richards, as it is a completely different world and a completely different man. That being said, nothing that Wade, Hickman, or the others have written will be taken into account in this analysis, because all of those stories are of a different man than he who was introduced to us in August of 1961. Much of Reed's recently described personality traits come from this later era. If you want to describe that Reed, feel free to, but do not lump that Reed Richards with the 30 plus years of stories of a completely different man. Here I want to point out that there is nothing wrong with liking the many iterations of Reed Richards after Heroes Reborn, but they are not THE Reed Richards, the one Stan Lee created, whose further adventures were told by giants in the industry like Roy Thomas, Walt Simonson, Tom DeFalco, and last but certainly not least, the incomparable John Byrne. It is this Reed Richards whose legacy and character is being besmirched by comic book fans who have limited reading comprehension skills and even less understanding of Marvel's greatest hero, whose honor I feel divinely inspired to defend. Now, this dissertation will ramble a bit, and we'll talk of all that makes Reed who he is, but specific attention will be placed to hit back against the oft-repeated terms nerdy, socially awkward, and neglectful to his wife. So let's get started, friend! From the beginning of the Marvel Universe, Reed has been the sanest, most rational, most approachable man in the world, at the forefront of human exploration and defense. Even his self-admitted biggest mistake, not getting proper shielding for their virgin flight to the stars, not the moon as has been written later, was spurred by his desire for America to reach outer space before the Communists. It was not a selfish wish. He was trying to save the future of the world. From our first meeting with him, we know who he is. Based on his oft-retold origin in Issue 1, we can see he is 1. A brilliant scientist, 2. A fearless adventurer, and 3. A true hero who will not ask others to risk what he won't risk himself. He is a man's man, not a macho male chauvinist, but a truly heroic individual who stands up for his beliefs and is willing to risk life and limb in the process. This is also what made him a hero in World War II, an aspect of his life that has been wisely veered away from as to not date his character, but should still inform his personality traits at the very least. He states in issue 179 that he was only a few medals short of Audie Murphy, the real-life super-soldier of World War II. This alone should tell you that he is no pushover, wallflower, effeminate, or simple brain as he is often described. He knows who he is, what he is, and will state his mind and act on his conscience in all issues. This is a far cry from being nerdy. Reed Richards is the smartest man in the world. Actually, the second. Dr. Doom is smarter, but his ego gets in the way, but I digress. But his intelligence does not make him a nerd, it makes him a renaissance man, a true intellectual. This has become increasingly annoying to me over recent years. Just because a character is smart, 
That does not make him a nerd. It doesn't mean he should wear glasses. It doesn't mean he should say, according to my calculations. And it doesn't mean he should be socially awkward. Which brings me quite perfectly to my next point. There has been much ado about this phrase lately, and I am honestly perplexed as to why. Of course, I know why. After the film A Beautiful Mind came out in late 2001, writers have tried their best to put Reed Richards on the spectrum. Not only would autism make him a more interesting character, but it also gives writers a much needed excuse for their own mediocrity. Sure, Reed is smarter than me, they think to themselves, but only because he's autistic. No, he is smarter than you because one, he's fictional, and two, he's a super genius. End of story. This updated characterization informs decisions like having Reed write and draw all over his expensive equipment in order to come up with formulas, or speaking odd, stilted dialogue, like in the Civil War comic book, when he states in a letter to his wife that he cried for a full 93 minutes, when he found out she left him. What is this? This is where the socially awkward Reed comes from, but it is not in line with the character Stan Lee created. And who would know the character better than the guy who created him? At the forefront of scientific exploration, Reed Richards is often the first human being alien races encounter, and acts as an ambassador to numerous other localities. He discovered the microverse and the negative zone, and in both places has found himself aiding the good people of those lands against evil tyrants and warlords, be they Psychoman, Annihilus, Blastar, Stygor, or Terranith Gestal, to name a few. He had made allies with the royal family in the microverse, and is considered the closest human friend of the Inhumans. Kings, aliens, construction workers, super spies, cowboys, evil dictators, supervillains, World War II heroes, all find they can converse with him on their level. He has never shown the slightest bit of social awkwardness. If he did, how would he come to be so effective in his relationship building? How could he, a man who came from a multi-million dollar California upbringing have become best friends with a New York street tough in Ben Grimm if he couldn't navigate a normal conversation? How could he have come to understand the infant terrible was, well, just an infant if he couldn't read social cues? How would he have understood the Castorian's plight in issue 253 if he didn't take the time to put himself in their shoes and realize why they were afraid of their paradise planet? How could Galactus, the last remnant of the universe before the Big Bang, the devourer of worlds, come to regard him as a friend if he was socially awkward? How could entities like the Watcher, the Norse Allfather Odin, and even Eternity itself come to his defense during the trial of Reed Richards if he wasn't able to adequately express himself and leave good impressions on these people, or those who would tell these people of him? How could he have convinced a known psychopath like Dr. Octopus to help his wife in issue 267 if he was socially awkward? The psychiatrists at the hospital where Reed picked up Octavius even said that in a few simple moments, Reed performed, quote, a little medical miracle, end quote, by doing, quote, weeks, perhaps months, of work in minutes, end quote. Here is a perfect illustration of his social skills at work. In issue 287, Reed is speaking to his wife, Susan, his teammate, She-Hulk, and his friend, the Wasp. Now, in-universe, these are perhaps the three most attractive, desirable women in the world. On more than one occasion have men, often villains, fallen in love with them at first sight. And here is Reed, with all of them in the room at the same time, joking, quote, Well, I must say, this makes quite a change from the usual day-to-day -day routine of a scientist's life. It's not often a fellow finds himself in the company of three of the most beautiful women in the world. End quote. He understands they are beautiful, and tells them as much, and they eat it up. And then, in the next panel, he just as smoothly declines an offer to accompany them to their hairdressers, as he has to continue work on the Fantasticar. Now, who do you know who is that confident, that self-assured? No one! That is a hallmark of Reed's character. He is completely unflappable in any situation. He knows just the right thing to say, and what's more, it's all genuine. This is why he is beloved by everyone. 
His intelligence doesn't ostracize him. It allows him to understand differences and commonalities between all beings. And with that comes an empathy and strength that has served him and humanity very well. He understands what drives people, what causes them to act the way they do, and how to approach a situation so it does not have to escalate to violence. His attempts at peace do not always work, but that is not because of any fault in him. And now to the final point, and the one which angers me the most. Reed Richards is neglectful of his wife, Susan. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Reed Richards is the most caring husband in the Marvel Universe. Everything he does, he does with his family's best interest at heart, particularly Susan's. Their biggest fight, the one which caused her to leave him, was not because he wasn't caring about her, but that he was caring too much and wouldn't let her go on missions with them. Everyone knows how much Susan means to him, how much he cares for her, how much he dotes on her. Is he absent-minded at times? Kind of, but even that is a bit disparaging. Consider, if you will, all that he juggles in his mind at all times. He thinks about his family and friends and their safety. The financial future of the Fantastic Four. A cure for Ben Grimm. Whatever number of projects he is working on at the time, and whatever villain they are trying to stop at the moment. So cut him a little slack if he tends to get a bit wrapped up in his latest invention, seeing as how, more often than not, they save the world from complete destruction or total subjugation. Yeah, but he doesn't spend a lot of time with her. Let's look at this closer. The Fantastic Four are fictional characters. They are lines on paper put there by the people who write and draw the stories. Some of those writers, Stan Lee and John Byrne especially, focus much more on the interpersonal dynamics of the group than other writers do. Therefore, tender moments of affection between Reed and Susie are not always shown, because they don't fit in with the story the writer wants to tell. Walt Simonson's run was like a roller coaster ride, hardly any time to breathe before being thrust into the next adventure. There was not a heavy emphasis on Reed and Susie's romance, because the story didn't call for it. So looking for a continued strong thread of anything is a bit futile in that respect. But just because it isn't shown, it doesn't mean it doesn't take place. It never shows the characters in the bathroom either, but we have to assume they have normal human bodily functions just like everyone else. So we have to look at what is shown to tell the tale. And that is what we are going to do right now. In issue three, Susan designs costumes for the team. Reed instantly implements them and wears the suit almost constantly. In issue 27, the opening splash page is Reed trying out his new thought projector helmet. What is he thinking of? Susan. In FF Annual number 6, he goes into the negative zone to steal the cosmic control rod away from Annihilus, a being who earned himself the title of the living death that walks. Why does he do this? That is the one thing that would save Susan's life when she was near death during the birth of Franklin. In issue 237, we see Reed, Susie, and little Franklin on a horseback ride in Central Park at Sue's request. He even comments to his lovely wife that this was a splendid idea, as he does tend to, quote, become too insular, locked away in his labs, end quote, showing that he does take his wife's desires to heart and is more than willing to stop his experimenting to show her that he loves her. In issue 254, while on a discovery mission in the negative zone of all times, he and his wife spend time together, which ends in the conception of a sadly ill-fated child. In the original Secret War series, Reed Richards could not take the reins of leadership in the war of their lives due to his concerns over his wife and their unborn baby. Therefore, the leadership was passed to Captain America. In issue 266, he calls in all his favors to bring the top scientists in the world to his wife's aid. These include Dr. Michael Morbius, the living vampire, Dr. Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, Dr. Walter Lankowski, better known as Sasquatch, the member of Alpha Flight, and even the known lunatic criminal Dr. Octopus. And perhaps the best defense of him of all is how Susan herself feels about him. In all of Byrne's run, the only other run aside from Stan Lee's that really delved into the characters as human beings, and less as superhero adventurers, there were only three instances where the two even came into conflict. 
Instance number one was a cute little scene in issue 242, when she was upset at Reed being, quote, so, so, practical, end quote, when he created a mechanical Christmas tree for them, as he felt that better celebrated the season of life than the killing of a tree. Instance number two was in issue 282, when Reed wasn't sure if they should follow Psycho Man back to the microverse yet, while the city was in dire need of their help. Susan strongly disagreed, convincing Reed they needed to punish the villain for twisting her feelings inside out and manipulating her to hurt her loved ones. With no argument, he conceded, seeing how important this was to his darling wife. Finally, in issue 286, when G. Gray returns from her suspended animation in Jamaica Bay, Reed does not feel taking Marvel Girl back to her home would be wise at the moment, as it may cause her parents a great deal of shock, seeing a daughter they thought dead returns to life. However, Susan states that, quote, I don't make a habit of disagreeing with you, darling, but I'm calling you on this one, end quote. She explains that going home is exactly what the young woman needs, and though Reed does not care for the plan, he assents to his wife's judgment. These three scenes go to show two things. One, that Reed and Sue hardly ever find themselves in disagreement. And two, when they do, Reed is mature enough to accept that he is not always in the right. This shows how much he values his wife. And let's look at what Susan herself has said about him. In issue 245, while being interviewed by the very rude Barbara Walker, Susan corrects Miss Walker when she is introduced as Miss Storm, telling her that she is Mrs. Richards. She later explains that she does not think taking her husband's name makes her subservient to him, but she does know it makes him proud that she would take his name, just as proud as she feels bearing it. Then she goes on to say that being a wife and mother is the role she loves the most, and due to her thought balloon at the end of the interview, we know that all she said was absolutely true. Does Reed get wrapped up in his work at times? Yes. But is he neglectful to his wife? Or does he push her away? Or does he make her feel unwanted? Not on your life, pal. All of what I have just explained goes to show that the modern consensus of who Reed Richards is is flawed, and quite frankly, slanderous. It is this thinking that got John Krasinski cast in the role of Mr. Fantastic, even though he is precisely the opposite of who is needed. We do not need someone with sympathetic, wet eyes, a huge nose, and a beard. We need a robust man, not overly buff, but masculine. A man with a strong, handsome face, evoking respect and awe. We need a man who is actually intelligent, who can deliver lines of cosmic impossibilities with the utmost sincerity. We need a man who can be tender, stern, inquisitive, and likable, all in equal measure. The perfect man for the role of Reed Richards would be the late, great, vastly underrated Bill Bixby. He is the only actor who hits all the marks and actually looks like the character. Have people not read This Man, This Monster? It is often touted as Stan Lee's greatest issue, but I doubt many of these people who claim to be experts have even read it. There is far more to the story than the splash page of the thing looking dejected. It is a story about a man who envies Reed Richards' success and attempts to murder him, only to realize what a brave, selfless man he is. This prompts the villain in the end to sacrifice himself to protect a man he realizes is truly good. That is who Reed Richards is. A powerful force of a man who inspires greatness and boldness in those around him. When America needed him, he stood up to the plate. That inspired Sue and Johnny to risk their lives with him, and is part of the reason why Ben went up despite his misgivings on the situation. Is Reed Richards perfect? No, I don't think anyone in the Marvel Universe is. But his flaws are much different than what people try to make them out to be. No, he's not perfect, but he's as close as you can ever hope to be. That's why he's Mr. Fantastic. I thank you very much for listening this long. Hopefully enough people will hear this and Reed's integrity and true character will be restored. Will anything change? Who knows? But now I have done my part in reclaiming the glory of the greatest hero of Marvel Comics. Remember, not even Captain America fights the good fight knowing he has a wife and kid back home. And as a final note, please, Mr. John Byrne, if I have gotten any of this wrong, 
please feel free to correct me.